Steve Sherlock here for Franklin Matters, Franklin Public Radio, anywhere on the internet, WFPR.FM, and in the local Franklin Mass FM radio dial, 102.9, in the car, uh, at home. Today, another Making Sense of Climate session with my guide, Ted McIntyre. Ted, how are you doing today? I'm just doing peachy keen, Steve. So good to be here. Oh, good. And we've got a guest today, Dave Rittenhouse. Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for having me. This is good. You're going to help us energize Franklin, or we're going to help you energize Franklin, something like that. There's a collaborative piece there, right? <laughs> yes, that's what we're trying for. So walk us through. Energize Franklin is effectively part of a bigger website? Yes, Energize Franklin is a subset of massenergize.org. Uh, and that is a nonprofit organization uh, designed just for the state of Massachusetts. And uh, we proposed uh, back in April of 2022 to the town council that we have this site uh, added for the town of Franklin. And uh, I found out that funding can be a little tough to uh, get quickly. So we went on a uh, campaign to raise funds and uh, we got trained. Uh, it was pretty arduous raising funds, but we got trained in November of last year and the site went live uh, March 28th via Franklin Matters newsletter. Cool. So this is just to be, just I gotta jump in, just to be clear. So Energize Franklin is a website that people can go to on the web, and we will, of course, we will mention the, the link, but you go to this website and basically do stuff that we'll hear about, right, Dave? Yes. And in the not so distant future, you should be able to go to energizefranklin.org and get there. Uh, that link hasn't quite been set up yet, but should be set up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, the current path is community.massenergize.org slash Franklin MA, which is a, a certainly a mouthful. But uh, yeah. if you just go to massenergize.org and you look for the communities page, you can find Franklin listed there. And that might be, uh, you know, that's a, uh, an equally good way to get there. Yeah. And for the listeners in the show notes, we'll include the link so you don't have to scramble with pen and paper now. Um, for the regular listeners and or subscribers to Franklin Matters, you could also go to franklinmatters.org. A little bit easier, quicker, you know that one. And then scroll along down on the right column under other resources. And in the alphabetic order, and Energize Franklin should be in that list as well. Click on that link and you'll come to the page. Yes, all good ways to get there. Yes. So, so Dave, getting there is half the fun, right? Once you get there, what's up? What goes on? Right. Well, uh, we have, a, you know, we may have a, a version of this on YouTube. That's the hope with the video. And we're showing a, a sharing a screen right now, which is the home page uh, for us. And the way it's set up is there's a little more stuff if you scroll down, but the main action is uh, under the three photographs where you have four buttons. One is take action, one is join us, one is testimonials, and one is events. So those are the things, but the basic idea here is, you know, Dave, there's... can I jump in, Dave? Before sure. you before you go on, let me just uh, let me just describe the page, right? For our for people listening on the podcast, uh, th th we're looking at a web page, but it is a beautiful web page. Across the top, across the top banner of the Energize Franklin web page is a picture of the uh, Ray Library, with of course the statue of Benjamin Franklin shrouded in snow on the left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side is uh, one of the schools, I think. It's not Parmenter, but it's, it's it a, is Parmenter. Yeah, it is Parmenter, Parmenter with yeah. solar panels on top of it. Okay, and smack in the middle is a picture of Franklin Common on a what looks to be a blustery winter day. Right, so there's these three pictures across the top that let you know you are very much in Franklin, and this is a local a local thing, right? And below that are the the four sort of buttons that you just mentioned that people can jump to. Right. And the, the whole idea of this is to, 
uh, allow people to think about ways that they can help uh, with uh, the climate and, and taking personal responsibility for you know, emitting less carbon and, and going into the decarbonization area. Um, and uh, you know, there's the, the green communities, which there's 351 towns in Massachusetts and I think they're all green communities in one way or another, but there's only 21 cities and towns right now that are part of Mass Energize. So this is a very kind of elite thing for uh, Franklin to be a part of. And, and, and this network is basically a nonprofit network. It's not a government funded thing at all, right? This is, this is people getting ready to taking action on their own, right? The, ma the Mass Energize sort of umbrella that this website sits under. Is that true? Yes, the whole thing is nonprofit. Uh, currently, uh, there is an uh, interest in getting the town of Franklin to help with the annual funding. It's just a, uh, $950 a year at this point. So pretty modest cost mm -hmm. for a town like Franklin. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. That was presented to the town council uh, earlier this month for their consideration. But um, yeah, thus far, all the money that's been raised has been through private donations, although two of the town councilors have actually uh, donated to help bring the site to where it is today. And uh, Dave, one, one other, I, don't, I don't mean to grill you here, but these are all interesting questions. You said a word that always makes my ears perk up, and it is, uh, it may be for people that are just coming to this issue, uh, can be intimidating. So can you tell me, when you say to decarbonize, that sounds like, I don't know what, right? It sounds like a medical procedure. Tell me, what, when you say decarbonize, what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, there's, there's many different ways. Uh, choosing, you know, the transportation that you take. Uh, there's a lot of incentives right now for people to get uh, vehicles that either use less gasoline or no gasoline. Um, and uh, then there's also things that you can do for your home. Uh, to use uh, electric uh, fire devices to heat your home rather than burning oil and gas, which has been the traditional way of, of heating. I mean, it sounds like decarbonization means basically stopping the, um, stopping the production of carbon dioxide from your house and the way you drive and the way you live. So to decarbonize is to get rid of the CO2 emissions that res result from you burning burning stuff, right? Yes, the, uh, the safe carbon dioxide level is uh, 350 parts per, per billion, and we're well over 400 right now. So we need to find ways to burn less stuff. That's kind of the, the simple story on this matter. Right. So on that point, the 350, so that's where the 350.org comes from. It's the 350 oh, yeah. parts per billion. Per million, per million. Per million, okay. Thank you, Ted. I wasn't no, sure which one it was. <laughs> no, and so Steve, there's a whole there's a whole subtext of that. So 350 is, of course, the famous the famous Bill McKibben organization. Yes. Right, and there it has spawned um, other organizations. Like almost every state now has a 350 with the state initials. So there's a 350 Mass. Right. In fact, there are. We can put up links. There's a 350 Mass organization node right here in Franklin. Franklin right? node. Yep. Uh, the Franklin Note of 350 MA, but the 350 comes from the fact that uh, science, in quotation marks, the scientists have, have sort of come to the conclusion that 350 parts per million is the level at which you do not melt the ice caps and you don't ruin the world. And in particular, uh, that kind of level is something that would tend to preserve um, coral reefs and islands and all kinds of good stuff, right? So 350 is minimization of the damage from climate change, right? And it's a political number in a sense that, I mean, who's deciding how much damage is acceptable, right? That's a very, mm -hmm. very thorny issue, right. right? But the 350 number is where they think we could be stably. And the scary part is that as of today, or as of earlier this week, the actual carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were 424.8 parts per million in the air. Mm. So we're pretty much 75 
parts per million above where scientists think is safe. So it's a screaming house on fire kind of emergency. I mean, we're already overshot what we thought we is safe. But that's where the 350 comes from. And that's where the, uh, the call for decarbonization, which is a fancy way of saying stop burning stuff. Yeah, so I think that helps us to the extent that for the listeners, if you're new here, thank you for joining us. If you're regulars, this is uh, a continuation series of helping me make sense of climate. And to the extent that the IPCC, the uh, International uh, Intergover- Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Thank you for helping me on that one. I started going international. I said, no, that's not right. <laughs> But uh, it's an organization of the United Nations, and they've been producing reports of which then the state of Massachusetts in particular has produced a roadmap upon which the state at that level should be able to, you know, mitigate and start changing the way so that we can come back to 350 over some period of time. And our discussions, the series of discussions has effectively been, how do we do that? Dave, I think this is giving us a key piece to the puzzle. It's like, okay, we talk about internet, we talk about UN, we talk about mass, but this is you and I and others, our neighbors in Franklin. This is things that we individually can take action with. Right. And maybe this is a good uh, chance to talk about one of those four buttons that we have is the uh, called take action. And currently we have 21 things that you can do. Um, One of the early things to do is we're asking people to register on the site, uh, basically giving us your email address. And once you do that, um, you know, in the future, if we have a newsletter, we might send you that unless you say you don't want it. But um, mainly, we're not going to bother you. But being registered on the site gives you the chance to check off um, the 21 different actions as you complete them. So um, this is actually uh, a view of the site with me being registered on it myself. And I happen to have solar panels on my house and um, I have a plug-in hybrid vehicle. Um, it's not a full electric vehicle, but it's one of the things you can do. I used to get 20 miles per gallon. Now by plugging in, I'm getting close to 90 miles per gallon in a Prius Prime. So that's, wow. a, you know, a more than four times reduction in the amount of gasoline that I am using per mile anyway. And uh, so it's it's a nice uh, way to see what kind of options you have. And they're not all big ticket items like cars and solar panels. There's plenty of other smaller things you can do using LED light bulbs, uh, mass save, since Franklin is a national grid uh, community and, and ever source for gas now, um, will subsidize the cost of insulating your home. And I've taken advantage of that. And that's a really nice uh, service. And I just actually on Tuesday had a heat pump installed to replace my central air conditioning. And that um, is going to be partially funded by the Mass Save program. So that's great. Congratulations. there's money out there to help you uh, uh, become more climate friendly. Yeah, and that's a good point, I think, to help reinforce because Ted and I, I think, have talked about this a couple of times where Mass Save will, and I think it's every three years, do an energy audit of your house, your abode. And mm-hmm. if you haven't done in your case, say insulation, et cetera, they'll come in, do an assessment and give you some options in in many cases with either grant and or, you know, advantageous pricing um, in order to take those steps. Yeah. One of the action items that we haven't added here yet is uh, 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 lawnmowers. They actually, for $300 last year, anyway, you could get a push lawnmower with a battery, um, by Ryobi that uh, I bought one and been very happy with it. It goes for almost an hour on a single charge and then it'll recharge in like an hour. So you're not down for long once the battery wears out. So, um, you know, instead of- David, I can't, gas... I can't mow for more than an hour anyway, or I'll just, <laughs> uh, I mean, I hate it. So an hour is a nice time limit. Yes, nice to give yourself a break. Uh, 
So yeah, there's uh, you know little things that you can do too. For, you know, three hundred dollars is a, it's it's more manageable for a lot of folks than uh, you know a very you know like a solar system. I was going to say, Dave. I mean, can you you said there are there are small items. I'd be interested because yeah, I mean, the, the, on this list, all of a sudden we talk we're talking about you know money. Right, but there there are things besides money. I think if you back up to the top of the list, there's something as simple as there's an Earth Day festival coming up Saturday. You could join um, um, you could join uh, 350 MA or at least register with them. You could eat a plant based. No, I don't want to say. There's one of the actions is to eat a eat a plant based diet. I think, but I mean, you could. That sounds like asking people to become vegan, but all. Basically, you if you eat less meat, you're taking a climate action. So there's lots of stuff here on this list that is Who's zero, no, no regrets, <laughs> right? Zero investment, and you've actually started to do things. Absolutely. Yep. The uh, yes, the Earth Day uh, festivities right now uh, will be the the usual uh, trash cleanup. Uh, at Beaver Pond, and I suspect this podcast will be coming out after Earth Day, so probably not going to uh, change anybody's path with this announcement. But uh, they do a real nice job. The DPW has, uh, if no one's uh, has someone hasn't participated in it before, they give you a, a T-shirt if you're one of the early people arriving there. Uh, they give you some trash bags, and you you go out and pick up trash for you know uh, an hour or however long you have the energy for leave the trash bags on the side of the road and the DPW comes and picks them up later because you're, you went to a designated area. So they know where to look for the trash bags later. And uh, it really does a, a great job of getting the, uh, the town looking uh, ship shape. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, and it's uh, coordinated also with the recreation department and Ryan Jetty. So we'll give them a plug because they annually have been running this event. Um, and clearly while it's one day, realistically, it should almost be any day. Um, but then if you do pick up trash, and I've seen there's even, a, I think, a Facebook page, you know, one bag where people along different trails, whether the Snet or Delcart or whatever, just along the street, pick up some of the bottles, the nips, whatever you see, pick it up, put it in a bag, and you've done your piece. And if you don't have that particular button on the page, then at some point in time, that might be a suggestion that, you know, help reinforce that kind of cleanup action on you know, any day as opposed to just Earth Day. Yeah, and Would there, I... another event that's uh, going to take place, it's been uh, scheduled, it looks like it's going to be either May 6th or 20th, uh, an event on the town common called the Environmental Extravaganza hosted by the Franklin Area Moms um, will be, you know, a first time event, uh, but Energize Franklin plans on participating at that and uh, hopes to see uh, people from the town there so we can uh, tell them a little bit more about our site and uh, get to uh, meet people and uh, enjoy the beautiful day hopefully we'll have. I mean, I, I think this kind of this, I am big on these uh, low threshold kind of actions, right? Because it, I just think people can be intimidated by the idea that they have to go go buy an electric vehicle right and, and and we want to emphasize that that's not where you want to start right you start with the simple things which is just like going to an earth day festival and sort of admitting to yourself that you care and then things would flow from that right absolutely so so david i related question i mean suppose i go to this uh, go to an earth day Festival. I've, so I sign up on the website. Uh, I register on the website. I take an action. What happens? I mean, do I get a do I get a score? Do I get a star on my forehead? Uh, what What's the consequence of that? Well, a couple of things. You you can mark off an action as completed, as I showed uh, earlier. Um, you know, and the other thing that you can do is that that action will be tallied in uh, our goals for you know, uh, cleaner environment, less carbon and so forth. So every action has its consequences and we are keeping track. And uh, as the, the site gets more action, it's going to really add up. Does that imply that, the, so that in a way, you know, there's the famous saying about you, you don't, 
you can't change what you don't measure, right? You're in some sense, you, you are now tallying actions to see how, how active Franklin is, right? Yes, yes, we, uh, we have goals. Uh, uh, we go down a little bit below the action buttons. Uh, we talk about uh, individual actions completed and uh, uh, number of households participating and so forth. And some of these things, because the site is so new, are actually come from statewide databases as far as how many homes in town already have solar panels mm -hmm. installed. So they may not be registered events that happened on the website here, but they are registered in kind of the big statewide picture of uh, people taking positive actions, either through buying EVs or solar panels. Those are things that the state is aware of. But the, and the, but the, the message is that by taking action, by, by taking an action, by putting you, you basically sort of concretize, shall we say, reify the good thing that you did. It goes on a list and it shows that, that Franklin is a leader, right? Is that fair to say? Yes. And, you know, I think that people, you know, feel once they start acting, they feel like, you know, they're participating and they're going to feel better about just progress and that, uh, you know, they're, they're participating. Yeah. So, we spent some time in one of our earlier uh, podcast episodes talking about kind of the climate grief and that it can be overwhelming and demeaning and, you know, disturbing, but action is a great antidote by doing something, you get that self-reinforcement. And if it's just the one little step, just, clicking in to sign in that's one good thing participating in an earth day participating in just picking up some trash on the street any one of those little things do add up and here you're able to we're able to acknowledge that and participate so that yeah there may be some you know a little competitive friendly competition if you will over time as to which community is doing more etc but the more people in there i think the better off we're going to be anyway yeah, some of the communities have uh, events planned like uh, EV test drive things. And, uh, you know, we hope to bring some of those kinds of things uh, to the event page, uh, hopefully in Franklin or maybe in a nearby town uh, so that people can explore, uh, you know, options that are climate friendly. Hmm. So uh, the SNET trail, the Franklin Bellingham Rail Trail Committee has a fundraising race in May. Would Since they're a rail trail, that's an outdoor activity. It's somewhat related to this. Would that be an event you'd consider? We are happy to, uh, you know, there's, there's a team, uh, several volunteers, uh, Kate, Marissa, and I, and, and Ted as well, uh, are out trying to, you know, get the word out about the site. And uh, yeah, we'd be very happy to participate in that. And I think, I, Steve, I think that's a good point because the, the breadth of things that we should be thinking about as climate related are huge. And that the, the entree, the threshold for people to uh, to begin to see themselves as people that care is pretty low. And so going, there you go. There's the Franklin Bellingham, Franklin rail trail committee is on the site. So it does list the monthly meetings, which yes. coincidentally are at 67 degrees, a good local uh, watering <laughs> hole. And you can certainly have some good conversations there. Yes, and they're opening a place over at Rentham Outlets, I hear, too. Yes, they are. Yep. I haven't heard the official open date yet, but they did say they were going to be open in April. So stay tuned. They'll be open there soon, and you'll be able to at least get, instead of the normal 67-degree hours across, across on their grocery location, from what I understand, when the Rentham Village place opens, they'll be open during the Rentham Village hours, which that gives us much more access for those who need a little piece of libation from here and there. <laughs> Pick up our Forge Park IPAs. Yes. <laughs> Buy local. Yes. So, but yeah, we're, uh, we're already have the, uh, the Franklin Bellingham rail trail committee thing on our, so they're on our sites. 
Uh, some of our participants, uh, our, our team like to use the trail and uh, it, it's, a, it's a great thing. And I would note the, the Franklin Garden Club, dear listener, if, if you're not watching this on a YouTube video, is a bee pollinating a plant. And of course, the survival of bees is a pretty important sustainability climate related issue. So again, all these things fold into each other. Yeah, that's been one of our common threads is where do we draw the line as what's not climate? <laughs> we start going down an end and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Yes, it is. In some cases, well, maybe not so much, but more often than not, there's something more climate related. So, so David, back on the homepage, there's a, the testimonials. Tell me what that means. Yes, I was just thinking it would be a good time to go to that. Uh, so here's um, you know, Marissa's testimonial uh, about uh, joining the website and um, then my testimonial on solar. I mean, the solar system has been great. I, I, I find, you know, my quick math on this is after eight years, I'm going to be getting free electricity for 17 years. So <laughs> solar... It is an expensive investment, but if you can swing it, it really, you know, it makes financial sense. Um, and that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, people might be thinking about it. There's a lot of uh, things with solar. People say, well, if my roof doesn't point due south, you know, it doesn't make financial sense to have solar. That's not true at all. It might have been true when the panels were less efficient. Nowadays, you know, my, my panels face mostly east. You certainly don't want to put them on the side that faces north. But other than that, it's all good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we have um, uh, Mark put in a testimonial about his uh, heat pump hot water heater. So that is a, uh, a way to heat your water with electricity, which you've always been able to do. But this is like uses like a third the electricity that a regular electric hot water heater uses. So really a smart investment and not, you know, not as expensive as, uh, you know, solar panels on your roof. Um, we have Helbo with his solar journey. We have Paul with his solar journey. I talk about the little Prius Prime um, and uh, windows and uh, food waste recycling. One of the things that I'm thinking more and more I probably want to join is there's a, uh, is it Black Earth Composting, Ted, that does the, the pickup? I am not sure. I think it's something close to that. And I know yeah. it's also been with, as we're getting into kind of May and the budget hearings on the town side, I know there had been a proposal that between DPW for their trash and solid waste plan, um, they were considering ex at least a pilot of that. I know the company does at least visit Franklin, but the town was looking at, um, and I don't know what the current status is, so people can check through the normal channels through Solid Waste, the uh, Beaver Street Recycling Center, et cetera, um, and at least advocate for it, because I think that's a, a key step, especially with the new regulations that Mass has introduced. So the food waste should not part, be part of trash. Um, it gives us an opportunity to do some composting. Right. Yeah, I think the, the statistics are that by weight in your trash, uh, compostable material is at least 25%, if not a third of the volume by weight in most homes. So that, you know, essentially is turned into really great dirt that's organic and can be used to grow vegetables and just a real great way. Otherwise, if it ends up in a landfill, it's just going to generate methane, which is going to hurt the uh, atmosphere uh, is way worse than carbon dioxide does. So, and you're uh, paying 25 percent of your trash removal fees to get rid of it. I mean, it's just yeah. So, I mean, it's like sort of an all-around win to do composting. Yeah, you can. You know, it's not just like uh, banana peels. It's things like chicken bones and any kind of bones and anything really organic they can take. Mm -hmm. So, eggshells, um, coffee grinds, and all that's good stuff. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that, that's our testimonials. We only have 10 testimonials at this time, but uh, 
we're expanding rapidly on those. So, so, so uh, David, I, I have a couple couple questions. One is, if someone were to join the Energize, Energize Franklin website, they would be able to post a testimonial about what they did and why they did it. Is that true? That is correct. They are um, checked over by uh, someone on, you know, on our team just mm -hmm. to make sure that it's uh, uh, all PG and stuff and, and uh, we're not getting uh, right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, so it's, up there If someone writes something in good yes. faith, uh, it, it would go up. And, and I, yeah, and usually it goes up you know, the same day that they submit it. So and, and the I guess the other point I would make is that if people are it, the reason these testimonials are so great is that if someone is wondering about taking an action, any one of these actions, they can go read someone else's experience, right? And again, you have this sense of connection and a little foretaste of what you're trying to do. So it simplifies the um, um, the path that people are on when they start thinking about doing stuff. Is that would you agree with that? Absolutely. And what, what I wanted to do, sh too, is show you that under each of these areas, you know, solar is a big one, but let's let's start there because, uh, you know, it can have such a positive impact on the climate. Each of the actions has a uh, four tabs to it, uh, a general description and then steps to take uh, if there's testimonials for that that is also listed and then a deep dive. So there's a wealth of information there. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, there's various links. Uh, when I was doing my solar journey, this uh, site called Energy Sage, which is pretty much based in the Northeast, if not New England itself, uh, is a tremendous resource for evaluating solar bids and getting information on the different uh, companies who make solar panels and the inverters that convert the DC power from the roof to the AC power that you use in your home. Um, really great stuff. So there's a lot of, you know, knowledge base that we're trying to accumulate here and that it's already here, actually. Right. Yeah. I mean, in that sense, you could, the site is educational in that you can go learn about how to do these things that seem overwhelming right if for someone who hasn't thought about it to say i want to put pv on my roof is a you know without some further guidance uh, that's not going to happen and here you can go and learn about what it takes and actually see people that have done it right absolutely and if we go back to the one about uh, uh cars uh they're you know people don't have to take the full thing and buy an electric car right away. I mean, even if you just buy a hybrid car, you're probably going to get 50% better uh, mileage. And you never have to charge a, a hybrid car. You just get way better mileage because there's a battery there. And uh, so if you go to a stoplight, the, uh, the engine turns off, all that stuff leads to better mileage. And, uh, you know, yeah. it'll... I think that people, I think you're right, David. I think that this kind of information allows people to educate their intuition because buying a new car is a pretty big decision, right? You only do that once in a while. So the more that you've thought about your options beforehand, the better off you are. And people that are approaching the time where they got to buy a car can read this and figure out what all the, the, the greener options are and what the vocabulary is and how to approach them question right and uh you know there's some some new terminology i'm i'm an engineering person by education and background so this comes more naturally to me perhaps but uh you know phev if you've never heard of that that just stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicle this stuff is all explained ice uh, what's ice well we all know frozen water but also it's an acronym for internal combustion engine so that's essentially what uh, cars have been working on um, until the, the electric electrification that we see going on right now. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. Very useful. Yeah. And like the energy sage with the uh, uh, solar panel install, there's a couple of great websites here. One's called Drive Green, 
and it kind of lays out some of the financial incentives that you can get for different buying cars and, and programs and so forth. Another one's called Plugstar. And um, there are buying options and there are, are leasing options. Uh, I have a brother who leased an all electric car and he just totally fell in love with it. And uh, it was, he, he leased it, you know, before the really car, the crunch came on new car values skyrocketed. Mm. So when he leased it, he locked in a great buyout price. Uh, and so when he came to the end of his lease, it just <laughs> would have made no sense at all not to buy it out the lease. And, mm. you know, he also had the three years to decide that, you know, this was a livable solution for him. So it really worked out great leasing first. So I'm sure you've leaned on him to write a testimonial. Well, he does not live in Franklin. He actually lives uh, in California. So ah. we're trying to keep it local here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the resources at least available on this page, if somebody else has another question or is there kind of a, a help function or a search function to say, hey, I'm looking for something more on this. How, how else can I get some help? Well, that's a great question. And um when I'm meeting people, I'm giving them my email address so that they can, you know, get a hold of me with questions and so forth. I think we might have uh, go to about us, contact us. So uh, yeah, so there's a contact form. So yeah, yeah, that would be set. That could be used for if you got a question or you found a problem on the website, et cetera then you could utilize that. So at least you have a methodology of yeah. That that goes right to my email and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully I pick that up and get right back to you. Sure. Well, that's, I... So, so, so I guess, Dave, tell me your thoughts about, um, what should I say? I mean, I'm, I'm always sort of interested in the, the meta things that surround stuff like energize franklin the website i see this as encouraging um encouraging people to act encouraging people to recognize that there are other people in franklin who care and it in a sense begins to make discussions about these things part of everyday conversation do you think that's happening is that part of what you hope happens i sure do i you know i think um uh, we need to feel good and, and feel like this is not the aberration, but the norm uh, to uh, learn how to create a, you know, a better world for, for our kids uh, and uh, to, you know, stop burning stuff uh, by using electricity, using renewable power. I mean, the solar panels on my roof it makes all the electricity that I use in the course of a year. So uh, because of net metering, um, I don't have to have a battery. It's just part of the deal with the electric company. I uh, don't pay an electric bill anymore. And uh, they're my battery. The, the, the grid is my battery, as it were. So mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's, it's a great deal for residential customers, for sure. And uh, yeah, but the, the norm, you know, can be a, a future where we're using renewable energy, we're using wind and we're using solar electricity. And uh, there's there's more than enough wind and solar uh, out there to uh, power everything we do from transportation, heating and cooling our homes, et cetera. So we don't have to burn stuff. The I guess the other, the other thing that is the, the, a topic that I spend time thinking about is the and is the distinction between personal action personal virtue as uh, dick cheney once said right <laughs> right saving the earth is maybe a personal virtue uh versus the systemic things you know the things that have to happen on beacon hill the things that have to happen in washington how, how dave how do you see david how do you see these things interplaying right the idea that people would want to take a small action in their own home, 
right? Probably something that doesn't cost any money, but they do it. Does that influence the debate at a larger scale? Or do you think that the sort of personal action and public action are separate? Well, there's a lot of interplay, you know, really that has made the progress possible. You know, for instance, uh, you know, under current tax law, when you buy solar panels, put them on your roof, you can deduct 30% of the cost of that from your federal taxes. Um, and with, with uh, Mass Save in Massachusetts, so there's state and federal programs, but the, that first one was on the federal level. Mass, Massachusetts also gives you $1,000 off uh, for solar panel install, a one-time tax deduction. So that doesn't hurt either. But for uh, doing, you know, like heat pumps, uh, you can get a, a little bit of a, a federal thing, but the, the statewide program is up to a $10,000 um, uh, funding for your heat pump renovation for your home. And uh, it's actually, if you do geothermal, which is a much more expensive investment, but that is a, is a $15,000 investment or right. uh, pay it back from mass save. So uh, there, the money that is available to, you know, help, uh, you know, there's a $7,500 potentially federal tax credit for the purchase of an EV. I mean, that's real money. I mean, right. EVs are not inexpensive, but those uh, state and federal programs really help a lot. I, I agree with you. Those are good things. Uh, I, I guess what I was or what I am feeling is that the the local action that people do, they eat one less one less uh, meat meal a week, uh, does not does not mean that we don't need to take systemic action and do much bigger things. I do think that the the action of people eating one less meat meal a week is a very positive thing because it's synergistic with the idea that we begin to recognize that at a collective level, we all need to do more things. We all need to be more involved. So for my money, the this website is a great thing in the sense of allowing people a path to become aware of what the issues are, what they can do, uh, but also at another level, a sort of, a, I don't know what the right, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it enables the, po the political or the, the, the atmosphere to develop among voters that this is an important thing that we all need to think about collectively. I think the two sides are the same coins. And that's why I think this website is a addresses both sort of personal, personally doing good things that make you feel better, but also supports the larger things that we need to do. Yeah. Uh, on a little bit of a different note, the one of the testimonials that the other 21 uh, cities and towns, I don't think I found one other town that had one on new and replacement windows. And a couple of people who had been uh, helped fund the creation of the site said, that's what I really want to do to, um, you know, the first thing on my checklist. And I think for a lot of people, you know, they may have been in their home for a long time and um, they, they want to do that. And uh, um, those can be expensive to replace but there was a homeowner uh, under that section of the new and replacement windows who not only did he fix his windows, but he more or less did a whole home energy makeover of a 50 year old house for uh, under $30,000. Wow. So um, he did the windows and it was very creative with the windows. He actually did storm interior storm windows. So rather than replacing the windows, he put in a quarter inch thick plexiglass pane on the inside to make sure there was no wind and to create an extra air gap to provide uh, insulation. And he mm -hmm. also, it was a, an electric heat home with electric baseboard, which is very expensive. And, and uh, he, he put in several mini split heat pumps and really uh, did an awful lot with a short amount of money. That's great. You know, thinking some of our conversations with our state rep, Jeff Roy, 
who leads one of the key committees and has worked on the legislation the last year and we'll have him again in a future podcast episode to talk about what's on the table for future uh, legislation. There are significant efforts underway in order to help Frank Franklin in particular, but in helping mass overall. So additional programs on mass save, whether they're, you know, credits or uh, subsidies or uh, things of that sort, um, as well as training for individuals to uh, one of the key pieces is as we make this entire changeover from fossil fuel to more of an electric based weather, solar, wind, uh, geothermal power, we need a lot more technicians, electricians and otherwise um, to do that. So there'll be some additional uh, job training, job transition uh, efforts underway um, and all of that. that, that I think is one of the key places that the government funding can incent our behavior accordingly. And I think that's that's part of the good thing. And then having this place to, oh, I can come here and then find out what I need to do and how to do this step or that step, that I think will be a good thing. One of the things that, uh, you know, if, you, if you're a homeowner and you have a central, uh, compressor that's running central air conditioning goes out, um, chances are it's going to make more sense financially to replace that uh, air conditioner with a heat pump uh, when it goes because of the rebates on the heat pumps. Uh, I just had the Rodenheiser, a, a local contractor, install uh, my heat pump and uh, very happy with that job they did. And uh, they were very accommodating when I said, you know, I really need a, a, a bigger circuit breaker box in my garage because I, I need to have the capacity to change out my gas range to an inductive cooktop uh, and charge an electric car uh, from the sub panel. So they took care of that and they ran a huge <laughs> 100 amp wire from the far end of the house to the other end of the house, uh, you know, there was an adder for that, but uh, it was all, you try to work all these things together in tandem when you have the opportunity, you're going to be running a cable anyway, why not uh, future-proof your house a little bit? Well, I, I think that's one, one of the things that I'm intrigued by this kind of work is because and th this is sort of the connection between the micro and the macro in that things like that, where you say, I want to, put the PV on my roof, but oh, then you realize that the electrical system in the house isn't quite adequate. Well, that presents a problem to be solved that can be solved as you just did, David, but also suggests that at the policy level, at the state level, there needs to be easier ways to address that and more help to do that kind of thing, right? Because uh, we just, we're on a learning curve here of trying to get, I think it's a, we need to upgrade 500,000 houses by the end of the decade. Right, so that's a tall order, and finding out ways to do that. Uh, I guess the Energize Franklin website puts us on that learning curve to figure out how best to do those things. That's right. There's uh, there's a lot of good uh, tools there, and uh, you know it's all stuff that you you can't get it all done at once. But you uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I think that's a, a good overview. Uh, we can kind of take it a break at this point, I think. Um, and for the listeners, we'll include in the show notes, as I mentioned before, the link to the Energize Franklin page. Uh, as we've discussed, you've got some actions you can take. You've got some uh, feedback and testimonials to be able to provide. There's a contact link as well. Um, so Dave and or others on the team can uh, help you as you navigate through this you know, road to a, a new climate world. And if you want to support our work, we even have a donate page. We are looking for a couple more hundred dollar checks to round out our list of founders. So please don't be shy if you can support us. We certainly appreciate it. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing today. And Ted, thanks for helping us with some of the questions. I think uh, 
this has been beneficial. And I think as we, we continue and then the listeners continue to use this, um, this, the, we'll come back to this potentially in the future and check on how many more people are there and how many more testimonials are there. And yeah. And if you have any other significant enhancements, Dave, then let us know and uh, we can bring you back in a future episode as well. Really appreciate this opportunity. It's great spending time with you, Steve and Ted and, uh, Ted, maybe I'll talk to you tonight at the 350 mass meeting. <laughs> maybe. Yes, indeed. Multiple All connection right. points. So the listeners, thank you. And a quick reminder, we do this because Franklin matters.